It is my pleasure to be addressing you today at South Africa's premier Cart Before the Horse show. Thank you to the organizers for bringing the elite together once again so that we may showcase all of our hard work and once again go through the agony of listening to so much bullshit. The trade in cannabis in South Africa remains illegal for 99% of South Africans. Yes, there are people here who are openly trading in cannabis. Yes, there are people who will brag about their expertise, their thriving businesses, their dubious research, and their slice of the pie, sometimes justified and sometimes not. Yes, there are people in this room with dubious qualifications and even more dubious ways of doing business. There are even people in this room who are making pacts with the South African police service in order to get immunity from arrests and harassment. In the absence of a regulatory regime, human nature will take every gap that it can get. Either we acknowledge the difficulty of the situation or we are building a skyscraper on the sand. The Amapondo, the operators within the carcinomic sector, in the townships, the people tilling the fields in the far-flung corners of our country are not here. Out of sight, out of mind. Let's build a high wall, shall we? Let that wall protect your precious slice of the pie. A select few snatch the whole pie. I am not here to speak about the pathetic, unconstitutional drafts of the Cannabis for Private Purposes Bill. I am not here to tell you how the evidence has never been heard, how we struggle to be heard as a public benefit organization. I am not here to tell you about the 10 crisis points in cannabis legalization that seem impossible to remedy. I am not here to brag that Fields of Green for All is the only civil society organization to ever have offer, offered up real solutions to the problem. I am not here to moan about the ignorance, the laziness and the corruption within our government and when, within the various gatekeeper companies of this industry. I am not even following the rules of never reading my speech. I am reading this verbatim so that I get every word right. I read this because I mean what I say. Today I want to talk about Ubuntu. There is an ancient African saying called Ubuntu that says, I am a person through other people. My humanity is your humanity. Archbishop Desmond Tutu explained it this way. One of the sayings in our country is Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks particularly about the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about our interconnectedness, not our unity, that's a myth, about our interconnectedness. We think of ourselves far too frequently as just individual, individuals separated from one another, whereas you are connected and what you do affects the whole world. When you do well, it spreads out. It is for the whole of humanity. 
Ubuntu is acknowledging another's humanity. We can't build something on the back of others. That aspect of apartheid is still continuing. Ubuntu is about restorative justice. Why is the process of blanket expungement of all criminal records not at the forefront of this discussion? Instead, we have thresholds for everything, plant counting and punitive criminal sanctions at the forefront. The Drugs and Drug Trafficking Act of 1992 is still in place and remains the last apartheid law. Our government have learned from the masters. Let's break this generational curse. Ubuntu, no person is a person without the others. You are relying on others. If you help an individual, you are helping all. Our courts use our world-class constitution as their overarching ethical principle. It is supposed to permeate into absolutely everything. Our courts stand up for David against Goliath. How is it that nobody in government is applying the principle of Ubuntu to amend the constitutional defects in our cannabis laws. There is a mad rush to stretch, snatch everything from the guy who sells the matchbox on the corner. It is not just the farmer, the photogenic rural people and their hillsides full of ducker patches. There is a whole picture here. Like Ubuntu is a philosophy of the whole. Ubuntu is simply a people-centered approach. What we are seeing in the cannabis industry in South Africa is clearly not that. What is our constitution? It was a draft published in 1993 put into practice in 1994, and cemented into our lives in 1997. Our constitution is a never again document. The people were told, here is our framework, here is our guiding light with our constitution. Make sure that the injustices of the past never happen again. However, when it comes to cannabis, our constitution is just an inconvenient document instead of a guiding document. Ubuntu is the underlying spirit of our constitution. We used the constitution to achieve what we did in 2018. The world looked at us and celebrated with us. And now look at us. Our government is now trying to claw back on prohibition concepts like plant counting and fear of the harm to children. They are putting substance above form. Every arrest is a presumption of dealing case to this day. We continue to ex be exposed to trauma that even in a lifetime of cannabis use, is not going to expose you to that same type of trauma. When are they going to stop playing, paying the police to arrest us? Instead, pay for the therapy of the victims of unconstitutional arrests, harassment and extortion. The cycle of bullying has to stop. Why do we have to bear being told that there are people in this very room making pacts with the SAPS to get immunity? Where are the police in these very streets outside here who harass our communities in Santon every single day? Mostly extorting their victims. Yes, the Santon police will, ladies and gentlemen, take you to the ATM. 
We need to be looking at justice in this restorative manner. We can't have retributive justice with punitive measures. So society needs to see that the books have been balanced. We all know that the legal regulation of cannabis is a harm reduction measure. This is where the whole bill, Cannabis for Private Purposes bill, falls on its face. Both parliamentarians and the police, like all of us, were born with no power. We handed them their power on a silver platter. I'm not suggesting that anybody here is a bad person. You cannot keep racing ahead if you don't take care of your brothers and sisters. What do you think that July 2021 unrest, looting, rampant, lawless behavior was all about? That was about lack of Ubuntu, ladies and gentlemen. This has to be fixed from a grassroots level. And increasingly, the whole concept of this trickle-down economics, it's bullshit. The rich are getting richer, and the cannabis industry is no different. SAPRA, the private company who were handed the whole of our legal cannabis industry on a plate, demonstrate their ignorance of both South African law and the international drug conventions, to say nothing about the concept of Ubuntu being foreign in their world. Every time they open their mouths, they demonstrate their ignorance of both local and international law. SAPRA does know, not know the laws it is meant to navigate. The World Health Organization, as well as the Commission on Narcotic Drugs, do not recommend the scheduling of CBD or CBN or CBG, as we heard this week. The INCB, the International Narcotics Control Board, is merely a watchdog with a spreadsheet. They are not the world's police. The Constitution of South Africa, as stated in Section 1 of the Constitution, is the supreme law of the land. No international treaties can dictate our law. Why is it that we have to keep on saying this to SAPRA? Because every single time we come up with the unconstitutionality of their laws, they blame the international conventions. The in international conventions don't matter. They're important for the whole world and they're important in their place. But they do, they do not compete with the constitution of South Africa. There remain three guiding documents for the solution to this crisis. The Eastern Cape Rural Development Agency, I believe they are in the room today. I haven't had a chance to go and say uh, thank you yet. The Weber Wenzel Report, if anybody has read that, and the Fields of Green for All Manifesto. The authors of the first two reports, which are incredibly credible, were paid for their work. The authors of our manifesto were not. These three documents are slowly changing the perceptions of the lawmakers and slowly clawing at their egos. And what we need to do is we need to amplify the words in our manifesto, in the ECRDA report, and in the Weber Wenzel report. They're all saying the same thing. In this crazy cannabis world, so many people start their journey as good people. Nobody goes in to start a whole mafia and a cabal. However, right now, everyone is just hanging tight, hanging in there. Because you people that are here today have the means to hang tight. Our rural people, our township people, us ordinary criminals, we're not just a photo opportunity. Remember that most people in South Africa do not have the means to hang tight until somebody changes 
the law. The next time I stand in front of you, having paid for my own transport and accommodation and that of my amazing team for the Cape Town Expo in March next year, having dedicated the last 12 years of my life to this cause, having to still bear the trauma of Jules's murder, never being investigated, am I going to have to say the same thing? That is my question today. Or is South Africa going to stand up against the rampant corruption, the virulent cronyism, the blatantly unconstitutional parliamentary processes, and the terrifyingly difficult legal processes? As a South African with a relationship to this plant, are you going to stand up to this? Are you going to support those who have made this very event possible? Are you? Picking up a gun has, has to be more viable than anything else for criminals in South Africa. Jules wasn't shot because he was white. Jules was shot for his laptop. Jules was shot because a businessman bought nine luxury vehicles during the hard lockdown and bragged about it on social media. Jules was murdered because we get pushed everything that is aspirational. Jules was murdered because most people do not understand the concept of Ubuntu. In closing, let me leave this with you. This isn't about cannabis, but cannabis can be the spark that blows everything up. Without Ubuntu, there's a mess. Our so-called cannabis industry is a mess. Let's clean up the mess, surely. Let's just do it, okay? once and for all, this, so that we may pave the way for fields of green for all South Africans, for all Africans, and all citizens of the world. Either you get that, or you don't. That is just a fact. President Cyril Ramaphosa and your entire government, and every single politician in South Africa, we are sick of your empty promises. You are anti-Ubuntu. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thank you very much.